What's going on, everyone? Happy Tuesday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Tuesday edition of the Pandemic Update for Tuesday, April 9th, 2024. If you're new to my channel, this is where we do the daily Pandemic Update on all things COVID and any other viruses that could be a health threat to you. Want to stay informed? Subscribe to my channel down below. Like what you see here? Give this a thumbs up. Know anyone else who needs to see this content? By all means, share this with anyone you know. Got something to say about something you see here? By all means, leave a comment down below. Alrighty, today we do have a few news stories that we are going to go over. Then we are going to go over to the website, datareport.info, and take a look at a few reminders of what COVID can do to you. Yes, the reminders of what one COVID infection can do to you. Then we're going to take a look at some other data. Unfortunately, so far there is no Walgreens update this week. I guess they treated yesterday like a holiday because they haven't updated. Hopefully they're not going to discontinue their updates. And we'll look at some wastewater data and some daily data as well. All right, first off, COVID-19 virus can resist in the body more than a year after infection. This is not the first time we've seen a study saying this. This is, will not be the last time. If you get a case of COVID, you may improve, but you may have long-term issues. Well, one of those reasons is because the virus can actually stay inside your body for a long period of time. And when that's occurring, you know, it could happen in the brain. It could happen in the heart. It could happen anywhere in the body. It could happen in the blood bloodstream it can cause long-term issues well after your acute case of COVID it can cause issues that could happen you know several months later and we do know COVID can have a significant effect on the brain more on that in a moment all right moving on to this now this is something I found interesting I tweeted this out yesterday evening heat waves cause more illness and death in the U.S cities with fewer trees well let me explain we don't even need to read all this because i can explain to you what's going on here when you have cities that have fewer trees you have less shade you have hotter temperatures for example if you have a city with few trees a lot of concrete asphalt well that surface in the summertime when it's really hot out it's going to heat up more and when it's heating up more it can lead to the potential for more heat-related illness. Versus areas, like look at this picture here. You can see areas that have more trees, more shade. Well, that actually keeps the temperature down several degrees, maybe in some cases as much as five plus degrees. And the more the temperatures down, the less you will have the heat-related illnesses. But when you go into areas uh, such as intercity areas that don't often have a lot of trees, yeah, I know every city is different, but I'll just give you an example here in Philadelphia. If you go down into intercity, not downtown, but like North Philadelphia, there's a lot less trees. It's always a lot hotter there because the surface heats up because there is less shade, and there's also less oxygen being produced by the trees. Therefore, it's a more dense air mass it's a really hot air mass, and, you know, it leads to potential for more illnesses. I think it would be a great idea if all cities would start planting more trees. All right, moving on to this. Measles, South Wales, outbreak declared amid two new cases. So, yes, we'll be watching this, and I will tweet this and put this on the website. I just found this a few moments ago. I'll also be tweeting this as well. In New Brunswick, Canada, two more COVID deaths in New Brunswick. However, there are no... Uh, flu deaths, and it does say respiratory diseases remain stable at this time. All right, let's go over to the website for a moment. I want to show you a couple studies here. We'll just randomly go along. Uh, this one, though, I did pick out because that first story, it says, Study links long COVID with lower oxygen levels in the brain. A new study that has been published. This is not new. This study actually came out back on March 3rd of 2023, over a year ago. But just wanted to give you a reminder, the new study... Uh, published, linked at the time, long COVID with lower brain oxygen cells, and there were several sources for that, The Hill and Science Direct. So, yes, uh, long COVID 
it, I'm telling you, it attacks the brain. You want to learn more about COVID in the brain? Let's go back here for a second. Yes, there's not one, but there's actually two pages full of studies on the brain. Look at this one. Brain MRI study shows significant abnormalities up to six months after COVID-19. Yeah, significantly for up to six months after COVID-19. That's uh, just insane. I mean, see, the virus can live inside of you. But it doesn't stop there. Let's go back even further. I mean, it has the effects on the heart, the lungs, diabetes. This is primarily for the people who are new to my channel who haven't been following me. You know, we've showed lots of studies since we started this video. Well, we've been documenting them on the website. We've been, you know, putting them in there, the links to the studies. And look at this. There's quite an archive. Do you have something you want to add to the website? It's datareport.info. Just click on register. You can become a member. Just hit accept the agreement. You know, enter in a username. Enter in your email. I will approve you. And you can start posting and putting your input or maybe stuff you find on my website, as there are several different sections. All right, moving on. We have to take a look at air qualities. And when you take a look at the air qualities today, you're going to see a mixed bag. One, it's well above average here in the east. I'm looking over me. Wow, it actually just hit 80 degrees here in Philadelphia today. So when you're starting to get that warm, you have the potential for some increased air quality issues. And we do see that just south of here from Baltimore down through Atlanta. You can see here there is some poor air quality. Look at Texas, southern Texas. Quite the bad air quality today. I hope there's no new wildfires there. I will have to check into that. And... The west is not doing bad at all. The northern plains is doing great. The Great Lakes, eh, Detroit on southeast, there are some problems. But Chicago, you're not doing bad at all. All right, Philadelphia yesterday. Yeah, EMS levels, volume levels, they've been going up. It's 800 yesterday. Yep, not much we can do about it. It does tend to go back up again in the spring. So we'll just have to keep an eye on it. And now taking a look at Montgomery County, I have to refresh this. 16 active calls right now. General weakness is quite common. Cardiac emergency, a couple of respiratory emergency calls, and then some other stuff mixed in between. Now taking a look at Chester County, Pennsylvania, we do see a respiratory call, and we do see a bunch of other stuff mixed in between. All right, drum roll, please. I have to refresh Walgreens. Let's see. Did they finally update? I've been waiting. Nope. No update from Walgreens today. All right, let's take a look at a few of those wastewater sites now. And I do want to take a look in Pennsylvania today. Remember, we were following uh, the area of Penn State, which is State College, Pennsylvania. University Park is actually where Penn State is. We were following a rise, and look at that. That rise was pretty significant for COVID. But now it is starting to go back down. It did start to try and go back up again. The most recent update dropped. We'll have to see, and hopefully that does not correct higher again, but yes, I would agree with this. Levels are high in Center County, Pennsylvania, and the area of this uh, 16,000 population served. RSV at this time, not much of an issue in that area. Influenza A is dropping at this time. Influenza B is dropping. HMPV did see some sort of a rise. Norovirus is starting to rise, and that is quickly going into the high levels. I would agree with that being high. And taking a look now at what is going on with hepatitis A, not much of an issue. There was a detection of MPOX back in February. All right, continuing on, we do want to go down to the south this go around. And let's go down and see what's going on in Memphis, Tennessee. I don't think this is a terribly big. Okay, no, it is a big wastewater site. 300,000 population. And look at this, COVID. It is starting to see a rise again. RSV, not much uh, going on with that low. Influenza A is low. Influenza B is low. HMPV, not much of an issue. Norovirus is rising slightly. Mpox, there was a detection back on February 13th, incidentally the same time as the one up at Penn State, State College, Pennsylvania. And there are a few detections of hepatitis. Now, it's too soon to check the areas where the solar eclipse were. However, by the end of this week and in next week, We'll be able to see. It'll be well charted at that point, especially next week, as to whether or not there are any rises in the areas that 
had big crowds of people. And then, of course, you know, a lot of those people, they went back. There's still big traffic in Pennsylvania. I was looking at traffic earlier. There's still big traffic in Pennsylvania on the turnpike going eastbound, leaving the path of totality. It's just amazing how many people went to this. And unfortunately, that could, like I said yesterday, that could cause spread in schools, offices, and not just there, you know, people going back to where they came from, but people who patronized in the businesses. Some of these towns that, you know, really just had a huge population boost over the last weekend. Yes, there could be some community spread there as well. All right, continuing on now. We want to take a look at this on this day in COVID history on pandemic history on april 9th of 2020 cdc modified and extends the no sale order for all cruise ships which as we all know to this day there are still illness outbreaks COVID outbreaks that happens on cruise ships i don't need to tell you about that i'm sure matter of fact we're going to be doing a poll i think later today how many people know someone who picked up a long-term illness by either being careless or doing some sort of travel. Maybe what it would be is how many people know someone who traveled and then caught COVID. That would be a great uh, poll. Maybe we'll do that because I'm telling you, cruise ship outbreaks of COVID, they're not getting reported on. There's like legal reasons why they can't do that. And there's a lot of them happening. Why, as you all know what happened here back in September, my parents traveled and well, my dad brought back COVID, so there's that. Taking a look now at what is going on with some hospital numbers, we'll just uh, do a brief look at some hospital capacity. Nationally, 75.3% of all beds are being used. 1.1% are for COVID-19. 0.6% are for influenza. In the ICU at this time, 70.2% of all patient beds are being used, COVID-19, 1.1%, and influenza is at 0.7%. And let's just randomly take a look at a few states here. Delaware, we have not looked at Delaware in a while, and for ICU uses, they're not doing bad. 71.7%, COVID-19, 1.5% of that, and 0% for influenza. So you don't have anyone in the ICU for influenza. When it comes to inpatient beds, eh, you're using a good amount of it. 80.9%, 1.5% for COVID-19, and 0.3% for influenza. Let's do another state. How about Kentucky? What is going on there at this time? Kentucky, 74.9% of all inpatient beds are being used. COVID-19, 1.2%. Influenza makes up 0.8%. And ICU usage at this time is at 76.3%. COVID-19 is at 1.3%. And influenza is at 0.7%. I always find it interesting. Now, Kentucky, I don't think is one of these states, but states where population is really growing over the past few years. I always find it interesting to check the trends on what has happened with their hospital capacity when they're seeing a boost in population. And for some states that aren't seeing a boost, the issue is you have uh, rural hospitals that are closing, which evolves into a capacity issue across the state. And I don't think, uh, I'm not 100% certain, but Rhode Island, we've often looked at Rhode Island. Let's go to Rhode Island real quickly. We have often taken a look at Rhode Island, and I don't think you're seeing a huge population boost. You just simply, you just need a couple more hospitals in Rhode Island. I mean, here you go. 86.7% of all inpatient beds are being used. COVID-19 makes up 0.6% of that. Influenza is 1.2% of that. ICU usage. Yeah, take a look at this. I mean, it's gotten a little bit better. 81.8%, 0.4% of that is COVID, 0.4% is influenza. Yeah, I'm going to have to do a deeper dive into Rhode Island's population, and maybe one day we will pull up a population chart on here just to try and figure out why is there always such a hospital capacity issue there. Same thing with Boston. I've had several people tell me that uh, Boston, the hospitals, they're pretty well full right now. So that's not good. Speaking of hospitals, New Jersey, come on. 42 out of 70 hospitals reported. Did that many people from New Jersey that worked in the reporting department take off to go see the eclipse yesterday? Maybe now caught COVID? I don't know. But yeah, only 42 out of 70 hospitals reported. Therefore, we're not even going to bother with that. Taking a look at New York State, 370 positives. There were a slight was a slight increase, which can happen on Tuesdays in uh, hospitalizations. I'm still hopeful that by the end of this week, we will see New York State go below 500. We'll have to see. The drop, while it's, 
you know, overall still happening. It's not quite as fast, but hey, it's still much slower than it was at this time last year. 547 people in the hospital, 64 people in the ICU, and Curiosity's got the better of me telling me that we should take a look at Long Island because we want to see just what did cause that. And again, this is another great website we will be using later in the week to see what's going on in upstate New York, because remember, upstate New York, northern New York, western New York, saw a huge influx of people for the eclipse. That's another area. New York State Thruway, southbound, is seeing a ton of traffic still, of people leaving the area. Those who said, I'm not dealing with traffic yesterday, let's leave today. Well, that's created a rush as well. Not seeing a big rise in Long Island. Long Island is actually lower on hospitalizations, 93, and 13 people in the ICU. Let's go up to the capital region of New York State and see what is going on there. And take a look at this. Okay, so the capital region today did see an increase in hospitalizations, four people in the ICU, and eh, let's do a very early look at North Country. And we can see there are just 13 people in the hospital. And Western New York, what is going on there for you? Okay, Western New York did see an increase in hospitalizations. Decent sized one, 32 versus... Uh, but it was 24, so that's an increase of 8, and 5 people in the ICU, which is an increase of 3. Alrighty, folks, that does it for today's pandemic update. I know we didn't do much of anything for the West Coast today. I promise tomorrow I will include you. I will make a sticky note to myself. I'll write one out saying, hey, find something for the West Coast tomorrow. We need to find something for the West Coast. Unfortunately, when I do my searches, I don't find much of anything these days. You know how it is. It's not much data anymore, but we'll do some wastewater sites, and maybe tomorrow we'll have Walgreens. We can do you on Walgreens as well. Alrighty, folks, thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Want more content? Subscribe down below. Share these videos with anyone you know. Hey, what would you like to see a poll done on? Is there something that you would like to see me make a poll about? Leave a comment down below. Or you just got something to say about anything I talked about today. Leave a comment down below. I will see you all again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone, and have a fantastic Tuesday afternoon. Thanks for watching.